And that brings me straight to my next story. India may have dilemmas about its future piloted aircraft, but India is riding the wave of being on the very cutting edge of something that could change the very paradigm of air power in the future. What you're looking at here is an animated concept of India's own loyal wingman drone. Think of it as an assistant that fighter pilots will have in the air. A pilot gets into a cockpit, but he also has what is called the cat's warrior. This is something that is being pioneered by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and will be taking its first flight this year. This may be an animated clip, but the product is real. It's on the ground and will be in the air soon. A loyal wingman or a collaborative combat aircraft is basically a robot, ro robotic unmanned aircraft that flies in collaboration with fighter aircraft and conducts all kinds of tasks for the pilot, elevating the pilot to the role of a mission commander. He can send his drone off to attack targets or to fetch information or to soak up intelligence or to act as a decoy to distract, to divert. Any number of missions can be taken on by the Cats Warrior. And it is the Cats Warrior that has been the sinosure of all eyes at Aero India, which is why it is my deepest pleasure and privilege to have with me today Group Captain H.V. Thakur. He is the Chief Test Pilot at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and a person widely regarded as pioneering and being at the forefront of the Cats Warrior and many other fixed-wing programs at HAL. Group Captain Thakur, really good to see you. Thank you so much for your time. I know it's a hellishly busy day for you there on day one at Aero India. But first of all, a huge congratulations on, uh, you know, what the Cats Warrior has been able to achieve so far. Give us a quick update, Group Captain Thakur, on where things are with this very, very exciting project. Uh, very good evening to you, Shiv. So, first of all, uh, let me tell you what I've been busy with. I've been busy with uh, flying the uh, Hindustan jet trainer, to be more precise, yeah. and I've been flying since morning. I've done two sorties today and three are planned tomorrow, and uh, every day that will be the schedule for us. But uh, while I was doing that and out on the tarmac and in the air, here on the ground uh, with our designers and uh, engineers, the Cats Warrior has been making some uh, waves, and not for the wrong reasons. For absolutely the right reasons, we have created the prototype zero and we have one and two also in the pipeline which will come up very shortly. Uh, we intend to fly them as soon as possible. <clears throat> it's been a while uh, under de design development at HAL and we have been mentored by a lot of our partners and we are using the services of uh, the private industry as well uh, to uh, do some fabrication for us. This is an out and out Indian product. Uh, yeah. Starting from the engine, which is uh, which is a maybe a surprise to many. Starting from the engine to the mission systems to everything, every nut and bolt on the aircraft is uh, absolutely Indian, and it will be Indian in the production variant also. Uh, this is an out and out Indian product, which is uh, like the long arm of the fighter, a uh, manned fighter, where the manned fi uh, man fighter would have reservations in going into a very intense A to A T zone. Where a uh, Cats Warrior kind of UCAV can be thrown in, it'll, uh, it'll uh, drop its payload, it'll come back quickly, uh, land and go up for the next mission. While the man fighters hover around uh, close to the border, these uh, birds, uh, which are low signature birds, will go in deeper into enemy territory, perhaps go into uh, lethal zones, fire their weapons, do the uh, intelligence gathering, do the surveillance do some EW roles as well, Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe act as a decoy uh, and, uh, you know, mislead enemy fighters towards themselves, uh, fulfill their mission requirements uh, <clears throat> and uh, land back quickly, be ready for the next mission. They don't really get tired, unlike pilots. Yeah. So uh, it'll offload the, uh, uh, the fact, the very fact that pilots get tired, humans get tired. Uh, men and women uh, in uniform are precious to us. We don't want to lose those resources. Yep. So this is like for every manned fighter, if you get three or four uh, unmanned uh, uh, machines which are there as wingmen to them, loyal wingmen to them, and they go ahead of them, uh, you, have, you immediately have a fighter force which is uh, rather than 700 aircraft, you have 2,500 aircraft within no time. They are easier to manufacture, they are easier True. to design, develop. Of course, we have to cross a few humps before we say all of that. Uh, but 
that's what uh, combat air teaming uh, system is all about and we are uh, in the big game and we are ahead of the curve and let's see where we get to for the air force navy and army really really good to hear about progress and you know i think the interest yes, sure. in cats yeah. warrior is very yeah. very uh, 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 it, it's something that is totally justified. I'm not surprised that there, we've seen so many crowds of people taking pictures of the Cats Warrior. But Group Captain Thakur, you know, you're a, you wear a couple of different hats. You're a pilot, but you're also a developer. You're at the forefront of developing this. Could you throw some light on what the challenges are in developing an unmanned, uh, you know, combat aircraft of the kind that Cats Warrior is, as opposed to a, you know, a crewed or a manned fighter? What are the differences and when do you think, uh, in your view, uh, the Cats Warrior will fly for the first time? See, if I uh, let me um, shatter some of the perceptions which are there. Developing yeah. an unmanned aircraft is easier than developing manned fighters. Mm. What is difficult about uh, unmanned aircraft is to operate them. To operate them is a little bit of a mess because you have to have a lot of systems in place to have them take off, land safely and in large numbers. Like you have uh, fighters which get airborne in fours and eights and you see Surekirans, nine aircraft or ten aircraft are airborne together. That's very, very difficult to do for unmanned aircraft. Whereas, mm. uh, and that's where I shatter the, uh, the, the, the common feeling. To develop unmanned aircraft is very, very easy and that's why you see hordes and hordes of companies uh, within India and abroad also getting yeah. into this, this game in a big way. And many of them succeeding, especially in India, many of them succeeding also quite well. So HL uh, having the legacy of 80-85 years of uh, aircraft development and manufacturing obviously is in the right slot to quickly, you know, this is like buy one get one. You, uh, If you already know how to... Ma uh, how to develop manned aircraft. Yeah. Developing unmanned aircraft is a piece of cake for an aircraft developer. What he does mm. need uh, a little help with or maybe mentoring with is the ATOL portion and the operations portion where the Air Force comes into play or uh, perhaps somebody who's already got the lead like DRDO or uh, maybe another partner company. Otherwise, uh, uh, largely speaking, uh, the uh, levels of redundancy you need in unmanned fighters, unmanned yeah. combat aircraft is much, much lower than what you need in manned fighters. Uh, the extent of development, the number of years that is required for development is much shorter for mm -hmm. unmanned aircraft and this is literally, this can be uh, while uh, you may be producing uh, manned fighters in the factory, at the back door of the factory, you could produce equal number of unmanned fighters absolutely Correct. within the same budget uh, and within the same project. Uh, that's something that we have to, obviously, we have to elevate ourselves to be able to do all of that. And uh, it's easier said than done now. But uh, 10 years down the line, you will perhaps see that what I'm saying uh, uh, turns out to be true in the future. Yeah. And that's where everybody is headed and we are, uh, we are right on the curve. And uh, I think we, we are up to the challenge of, uh, you know, this disruptive kind of combat where um, mm. uh, this is the only way to be yeah. or uh, be at par and with a very very large uh, adversarial force. And, and the reason and the reason why I, I I think that's important, Group Captain Dakur, and this is my final question is, you know, India and the Indian Air Force has been struggling, uh, you know, with its squadron numbers as far as manned fighters are concerned. You know, the, there are various challenges as far as. Uh, 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 squadron numbers, fleet strength, etc. concerned. Now there's a dilemma over whether we may need to import. You know, all those challenges are there before the Indian Air Force right now. Which is why something like the Cats Warrior, as you're saying, could be, uh, you know, something that we focus on because it's going to change the paradigm not very far into the future. In fact, it's already happening now. It's going to be a force multiplier which will actually help us bridge some of those gaps. Isn't that true? That is, uh, um, while that is true, uh, we still have to cross a few uh, very important obstacles which we mm. have yet done. So uh, yeah. I am not saying all the challenges are in our pocket and we've yep. overcome them. But like I said, uh, it's easier to develop unmanned aircraft, unmanned combat aircraft, easier to develop than developing manned aircraft, which DRDO, HAL, ADA has been doing for quite some time now. And uh, HAL definitely has been developing helicopters and uh, uh, jet trainers, etc., uh, for a long, long time. So, uh, for a company or an organization like this, uh, a two-ton aircraft, uh, which is used to developing an LCA kind of aircraft, which is a 14-ton aircraft, is literally a piece of cake. 
Yes, we have to uh, invest in it big time. We have to invest resources, manpower, and uh, our, uh, the time of our leaders uh, in this. And uh, when we have our conops right and we have uh, figured out exactly how to use these, uh, where uh, we, are, we as pilots in the industry are forming the bridge between the developers in the industry and the uh, Air Force, Navy and Army. Uh, when we uh, bridge this gap of understanding between the engineers and the operators, then we will come out with a great solution. Uh, hopefully Catch Warrior will be that first off solution. It will be a minimum viable product which can be straight away launched into combat. And subsequently, yeah. we'll have bigger and bigger variants, which are uh, which are perhaps not so easy to make, a little more difficult, but still easier than making man fighters. So uh, while uh, uh, ADA and HL may be developing uh, AMCA and ZBF and uh, um, LCA Mark II, this is the uh, uh, is the um, low hanging fruit, which yeah. which has to be uh, which has to be utilized by the uh, industry strength that we have. Low-hanging fruit, but the very, very leading edge of air power and something we cannot afford to miss. And it's really so good to see someone uh, like you, Group Captain Thakur, uh, you know, there taking care of this personally. It means a lot to you uh, and it means a lot to all Indians to watch, uh, you know, someone of your caliber leading this all-important project that's going to bear so many fruits for us as a country and national security. Thank you very much and all the very best to you and your team going forward with Cats Warrior and everything else that you're involved in. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So that was Group Captain H.V. Thakur. He's the Chief Test Pilot of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. And he is pioneering the Cats Warrior and many other fixed-wing, homegrown, indigenous aircraft programs at Hindustan Aeronautics Limited.